This is the exciting session about California, California High Speed Rail, America's mega project. We have our two speakers here, Michelle Bame and Ron Tudor. Um, I could probably introduce them both now so that we can uh, save time. Michelle Bame will come up first. She's the regional director for the California High Speed Rail Authority, and she's going to give us a whole update on the project and uh, anything that uh, Phil would have talked about this morning. Um, she is a uh, oversees strategy, stakeholder outreach, and related elements of project development for over 300 miles of the planned electric high-speed rail system in Southern California. Her, her project segments include Bakersfield to Palmdale, Palmdale to Burbank, Burbank to LA, LA to Anaheim, and LA to San Diego. So some of those are in the works now, and some of them are coming. So with that, we'll please welcome Michelle Bame first, and then Ron Tudor second. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we aren't able to uh, bring projects like this to fruition without the support of the community um, that you all represent. So these types of conferences are vitally important to our ability to be able to continue to do big things in California, not only with high-speed rail, but with all of our transportation providers. And make no mistake about it, in California, we are undergoing a paradigm shift in transportation right now. Over the past 30 years, we have been slowly modernizing our transportation system so that we can ultimately deliver that level of customer service that some of our uh, speakers have talked about, whether they be small projects like Angel's Flight or big projects like California High Speed Rail, ultimately they're all part of the same idea, which is to improve the way people move around the state and to give people choices about how they move around the state and doing some of them is very, very difficult. California High Speed Rail, of course, is one of those foundational projects. It's an 800 mile all electric railroad for the state of California. You can see here in the navy blue our phase one section, which is under construction right now. And really, it's under construction right now as a testament to Ron Tudor coming in and getting that started. Because we don't hire consultants or people to help us. We hire partners to get this done. And we will not get this done unless we think about that when we bring people on um, and integrate them into the project. Um, so you can see here basically the phase two sections and extensions as well to Sacramento in the north and to San Diego in the south. Um, as was mentioned, uh, we have a regional office here in Southern California and we're managing basically everything from Bakersfield down to the border. Uh, very exciting. What this ultimately does is it warps the terrestrial space-time continuum for people in the state of California. Now, instead of spending two hours to go 10 miles, people are putting an hour into a train that takes them 200 miles. That profoundly changes the way we live in the state of California. It delivers a type of mobility and opportunities to not only the residents of the state of California, but the visitors to the state of California that we don't have today. Then the key is to organize all of the other transportation services that we have available to us in California around this so that you have those choices to take the integrated trips, so that you have the ability basically um, to have the state at your fingertips. It doesn't matter where you live. You can go to school anywhere. You can work anywhere. If you're running a business, you can recruit the best employees from anywhere in the state. You are not dependent on getting them in that geographical area around where you have your offices. So this is really um, an amazing thing. And just for some of you Angelinos here, 
I'm one of them. Um, I don't know how many of you watch. Um, there's a yearly announcement of the world's worst traffic. And I am a proud Californian. I am very proud of all the things California leads in, not so much that we, Los Angeles here, lead the worst traffic in the world, not just the country. And they estimate that that cost us $19 billion. That cost Los Angeles $19 billion last year. So when you start to think about the investments of these big projects, you have to think about the implications and the cost of what we're doing today. Um, and look at that as an opportunity to shift, right, the investment in $19 billion, over $2,000 per person in fighting traffic in a different way. So, Something fun to think about, something else fun to think about. We are reimagining our cities, and this project contributes to that. You can see the white dots on there. Those are our planned stations. Those stations are gonna be built in the heart of eight of the 10 largest cities in the state of California. And so all of the speakers before now talked about that impact that those decisions that other countries have made about doing things like this have had. Um, so that is something really exciting about high-speed rail. And so that's where my office comes in. That's where I come in, right? I am the policy champion of this project. We think about why we need to do this. We think about customer service. We find great ideas to do this, right? But at some point, the rubber hits the road and we've got to construct it. So we've got to take these big ideas up here and we've got to bring them down and we've got to start building bridges, right? We've got to start building tunnels. And that's why our contractors have to be our partners because they have to help us come down from here, down to here. Um, of course, with high-speed rail, we are a transparent state agency and part of how we conduct our business is every two years we release a business plan. Um, our business plan is due and so all apologies. We have a mass of, of activity going on in our Sacramento office right now completing that draft uh, high-speed rail business plan which is due to be released this Friday. I would tell you all that they have a 60-day comment period, so when that high-speed rail draft plan comes out this Friday, take a good look and give us your thoughts, uh, because it does take the best thoughts in the industry in order to do a project of this magnitude. We recently underwent a, a leadership change uh, we now brought in Brian Kelly, who had been running the California State Transportation Agency to be the CEO of this agency. There is not a better person out there to run this agency. As we go through this period of time where um, we're really still transitioning, basically, from policy to planning, to construction, and we have over 18 active construction sites, so we are transitioning quickly, um, but we needed new leadership in order to continue to drive that forward. And that's the thing, it's happening. It's happening um, here in the state of California. We have almost 120 miles of the project under construction contract that represents $3 billion of investment in the construction, 18 active construction sites, over 1,650 workers, 
Um, a hundred percent of the steel and the concrete that we are using is recycled because it is imperative that as a modern project, we conduct ourselves appropriately. We have some of the most stringent uh, green policies in the country uh, for projects of this nature. Um, and again, this is where that partnership with all of the consultants working on this project comes in, because not only do we want to build something a little bit different uh, for the state of California, but we want to build it in a different way. We want to think about it in a different way, and so we need that input, we need that help as we conduct our work. And here basically are the locations of those 18 active construction sites. Um, you can see those if you choose to take, uh, for instance, a car trip up to Yosemite, you will be able to see the construction of this project from the 99 freeway. You do not even need to pull off to see it, but I would certainly encourage you to pull off and see it. Um, and again, it really is, um, it is that delicate balance. You know, a good project is a delicate balance between a synthesis of great ideas as they are driven by the time and the treasure conversation. We have a certain amount of time, we have a certain amount of treasure, we need to synthesize those great ideas, and then we ultimately have to get it done because we won't be able to complete it unless we start showing that we are getting it done. And when we get it done, great things start to happen, and some of our other speakers talked about that as well. Um, we have hundreds of people working on this project. The effects of a large transportation project like this happen at the beginning, from the idea stage all the way through to the benefits, basically, that that project then delivers in terms of mobility um, and improving the economy. And here's you know, just a primer, and most of you are experts on this already, so obviously a project of this magnitude has direct effects which lead to the indirect effects and the induced effects. And so it really is a rising tide that lifts all boats. Um, for the high-speed rail uh, project that we have underway right now, $2.3 billion has been invested in the state of California over the 10 years, 2006 to 2016. That employed 630 firms. 94% of that work is done by California firms. So this is really a project for Californians by Californians. 52% of that expenditure is in disadvantaged communities because we can't do transportation anymore in a vacuum. We have to think about inclusion and equity. These things are vitally important because the decisions we make about where these projects go change lives. And we have to be mindful of that, but we still have to get something done. We still have to construct. Um, you can see here some of the other numbers in terms of the overall economic output. And the future investments are continuing. We continue to move forward to get a train operational. We have to get one of these trains operating in California. We have to be able to capture people's imagination and show them a train. Because when people think about trains, you know, sometimes I think they're thinking about an old Western right, and a steam engine, or maybe they're thinking about Metrolink, which is wonderful and is a system that will complement our systems, but these trains are different than that. Think an electric Formula One race car that seats 900. That's pretty damn cool, right? We don't have that here. We can't show people that. So that's one of the things that we have to do is show that we can start, show that we can finish, and show that we can operate a train. And we need a lot of tools in the toolkit to do that. We need to be able to choose the type of delivery 
that we use to build different pieces of the project, whether it be traditional design bid build or design build or public-private partnership, we have to have all those tools in our toolbox in order to do this. We will absolutely have to look at different types of financing to do this, different ways that the private sector can get involved in this project so that we can finish it. And a lot of the uh, folks that have spoken before have talked about the successes. It's true. You can operate this system without a subsidy. It is proven around the world. You can do this better and faster and cheaper. And we need those, all of those ideas as we bring this project to fruition. Um, and so to end, I think I have a construction video here. Typically, you don't want the ground in California to start shaking. But in this case, it's being done on purpose. Basically, we're doing a seismic survey. This shake test is the latest step in the California High Speed Rail Authority's geotechnical investigations in the San Jose to Merced project section. Fugro, a subcontractor to geotechnical consultant Kleinfelder Incorporated, is using an EnviroVibe to replicate the shaking a high-speed rail train could create as it passes through this area. To measure the velocity of the uh, surface wave through the ground, and that's important uh, because it is used in the engineering of the, uh, of the track design and other, other factors. During this test, the seismic waves are picked up on a 57 meter long array of devices called geophones. As this vibrates up and down, uh, it creates a small electric current in here that's fed in down the cable into the recording truck at the other end. Each one of these squiggles is uh, data coming in from an individual geophone. Experts will use those reads to look for the potential for a phenomenon known as Rayleigh waves. The train pushes in uh, a wave in front of us and the soil is, is not strong enough to, to resist that wave and so you, get a, you start getting a motion in your, in your embankment because the supporting soil isn't strong enough. Rayleigh waves have been seen in high-speed rail systems in the UK and Sweden after the tracks were already in operation. The authority wants to avoid this issue before trains begin running. If we do find out with this testing that we, 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 we can introduce Rayleigh waves into the, in, into the soil, then that would uh, be an area that we potentially would need to mitigate. That mitigation could include excavating the dirt and using embankments that go deeper into the ground. The results of these investigations will help inform the environmental analysis that is currently underway to help determine the best possible alignment for the high-speed trains and for future procurements and engineering. It's kind of a new area um, um, and, and people are trying to get their arms around it, but it's, it's very important for, for high-speed trains. So while we're building high-speed rail, we're really hoping that we'll be able to put in some black fiber along the alignment so that we have better response with uh, <laughs> better response with technology um, and streaming services. Anyway, um, that's basically what, I, what I'm here to say. We need partners, we need the best ideas that we can get, and then we need people who have taken that leap before. Those folks that have um, the capability to withstand how difficult it is to be that first representative on a project. And obviously, uh, Ron Tudor was one of those folks who stood up and raised his hand and said, I can be that first person on that project. I can withstand all of the difficulties, and we can get this built. So Ron, if you want to come up. 